Hello. Uh, I'm going to present um, a talk on optimal control of false discovery criteria in the general two-group model. This is joint work with uh, Ron Gosset from Tel Aviv University. Uh, so the two-group model uh, has been introduced in 2001 by Efron et al. And, um, and it is as follows. Um, you have uh, a probability pi of being from the nano uh, hypothesis and then uh, given, uh, given that you are from the nano, then uh, um, you observe uh, test statistic from uh, a nano density and probability one minus pi of being from the null density from an, from an null hypothesis and then uh, uh, you, you have, uh, you follow the null density here. Um, okay, and the test statistics are independent. Uh, so they are independently drawn from this uh, two-group model. The goal is given the observed test statistic is actually to identify the non-null hypothesis. So those uh, that uh, uh, with hypothesis state uh, age equals one, where we define by age equals one if it's a non-null and age equals zero if it's a null uh, hypothesis. Okay. So uh, we are going to um, introduce a generalization uh, so that we don't need the, the independence across the test statistics. So basically, as in the two-group model, uh, we have the uh, hypothesis uh, state vector uh, H, which has coordinates that are independently drawn from uh, uh, Bernoulli with probability pi of being non-null. And uh, now we observe uh, the vector of test statistics given H, um, and it follows uh, some density, uh, some known density. Um, so, for example, a reasonable model for the test statistics in GWAS studies is the multivariate mixture normal. So, given the, the vector of hypothesis states H, uh, the observed test statistics are multivariate normal, uh, with mean zero if H is equal to zero and beta if H is equal to one. Um, and uh, uh, the covariance is uh, uh, sigma plus uh, an inflation uh, of the diagonal terms if h equals to 1, uh, where uh, sigma is uh, due to the linkage disequilibrium uh, in GWAS. So this, this uh, uh, the, the, the association basically between uh, the observed test statistics. The goal again is uh, given the, uh, obser the observed test statistic vector, uh, to discover uh, those uh, entries that come from uh, the non-null hypothesis, so with hypothesis state h equals to 1. Okay, so um, our notation will be as follows. So we have a decision vector uh, d, uh, where each coordinate is a binary. It's 1 if we uh, decide to reject the null hypothesis, so we uh, guess that age is actually equal to 1 and 0 uh, otherwise. Uh, in terms of D, the number of uh, rejected hypotheses is just uh, sum of uh, uh, entries 1 in the, in the decision vector. And the number of falsely um, discovered uh, hypotheses is uh, uh, the sum of uh, entries that are equal to one only among uh, those with hypothesis state H, which is equal to zero. And of course, what uh, the investigator is interested in is uh, uh, to have as many discoveries R, but uh, with a false discovery proportion that is small, so that V over R uh, is going to be uh, um, small. So that there are a lot of leads, not many false leads. Uh, popular error controls, uh, error rates for, for, for the two-group model are um, uh, the positive uh, false discovery rate, which, they expect, which is the expected false discovery proportion given that at least one rejection occurred. Uh, the, uh, the false discovery rate, which is just the, expected of, um, uh, the, full, the, the expectation of the false discovery proportion, and it's equal, of course, uh, to the positive uh, false discovery rate times the probability that at least one rejection occur. Um, so these two error measures directly target uh, the false discovery pr proportion in expectation. 
Uh, another uh, measure uh, often used is the marginal false discovery rate, uh, which is uh, the expectation of the number of false positives divided by uh, the expected uh, number of rejections. Uh, so, uh, uh, we have um, an, um, an optimization problem. We seek to find the decision vector that maximizes the expected number of true discoveries subject to uh, the uh, error criteria not exceeding a, a nominal level of alpha, where the error is the positive FDR, the FDR, or the marginal uh, FDR. <coughs> Um, and uh, the optimal uh, uh, multiple testing policy uh, with a given error control, we're going to denote it uh, by this OMT uh, for short, and uh, the decision vector uh, by D star. So uh, for the optimal policies, there is a central test statistic, and this is the loc FDR. Uh, so, uh, we denote it uh, for, for the i hypothesis, the local FDR is denoted by Ti, and it's a function of the entire uh, z-vector of observed test statistic, and it's simply equal to the probability of uh, this uh, hypothesis uh, being null given, um, uh, give, given, the, uh, the, given the entire vector of test statistics. So, basically, if uh, we know the components of the general two-group model, uh, we can easily uh, uh, express uh, the log FDR in terms of uh, uh, these components. Uh, details are here. Now, the marginal log FDR uh, for the two-group model has uh, uh, been introduced um, already uh, in uh, uh, 2001 um, by, by Efron et al. And it is the probability of uh, the hypothesis being zero, but given only the observed test statistics for that hypothesis. So, uh, for the standard uh, IID two group model, uh, the uh, log FDR is equal to the marginal log FDR, but otherwise, uh, they will necessarily differ if there is dependency between the uh, test statistics. Okay, so uh, the optimal policy, if we want to control the marginal FDR, which is the expectation of V over the ex expectation of R, uh, is uh, uh, straightforward. It's uh, just uh, to threshold the log FDR values uh, uh, with a fixed uh, threshold. So uh, basically all the um, log FDRs that are below a certain threshold are going to be rejected. Uh, where this threshold is set so that uh, the marginal FDR is indeed off. Our main results are as follows. Uh, we show that if we want to control instead of the marginal FDR, the FDR or the positive FDR, then uh, these policies uh, also, the optimal policies also will reject uh, the hypothesis with the smallest log FDR values. So, However, the threshold is a function of the entire set of test statistics, so it's not a, a fixed uh, threshold, uh, but uh, it depends on all uh, the realization uh, vector z. And uh, we have an efficient algorithm for finding uh, this threshold. Uh, so, uh, what... Um, uh, we're going to do uh, in the remaining of the talk was to show how we solve the optimization uh, problem for positive FDR or FDR control and uh, the efficient algorithm uh, that uh, results is a step down uh, procedure. Uh, and then we're going to compare and contrast uh, the different uh, optimal procedures to, share, to shed some insight in, into their, uh, uh, their differences. Uh, uh, and, and the benefit also specifically of uh, the fact that we incorporate uh, known dependency into the, um, into the procedure. Uh, and uh, also we're going to uh, show how it's uh, applied to uh, real data. And then we'll summarize and 
uh, discuss some future work. Okay, uh, so uh, the, we can actually uh, express the objective and constraint for the optimization problem in a fairly simple manner uh, using the joint density of our z vector and the log FDR values. And uh, here are the expressions. So uh, the expected number of uh, uh, true discoveries uh, can be written like that. So we see that it's uh, linear in the decision vector. Um, and uh, the expressions for uh, the constraints for the FDR, uh, it's, it's like this, and for the positive FDR, it's like this. So um, the constraints appear nonlinear in the decision vectors, in particular for the FDR in the denominator, we have the number of rejections. What we want to do is to find the optimal solution um, for, for this uh, the, the problem of maximizing the objective uh, subject to the constraint. So we want to find our decision vector D that uh, goes from RK to uh, a binary vector. The, and uh, it seems that uh, it's very challenging. Uh, first of all, because the constraint appears to be not linear in D as uh, we showed before in the previous slide. Uh, the optimization is over an infinite number of variables because uh, D uh, is uh, from RK. And uh, this is a discrete optimization problem because the decision is binary, uh, which can be hard to solve even in finite dimensional cases. Uh, so, uh, for, first of all, we have a result that shows that the optimal solution is weakly monotone in the log FDR value. So basically, if we have a log FDR value uh, that is smaller than another one, uh, then it will be rejected uh, first. And uh, the proof of the theorem is uh, just by showing, suppose it wasn't weakly monotone, uh, so, uh, and we have a policy, and then uh, we consider another policy which uh, so switches the decision for uh, at uh, for this uh, non-monotone pair, and uh, by switching the decision, we actually increase the power, uh, increase the number of expected uh, uh, true discoveries, and uh, reduce uh, uh, the error. So necessarily, the conclusion is that the optimal solution is indeed weakly monotone in the log FDR values. And this is very useful because given weak monotonicity, it turns out that the constraints we consider are linear in the decision vector. Um, so uh, uh, we're going to formalize it again, uh, the, the OMT problem, but instead of in terms of the decision vector, we are going to take uh, uh, the, the ordered uh, decision vector. So basically, if uh, uh, the smallest uh, look FDR uh, value is in location I1, then this will be put first in our uh, D tilde uh, vector. Uh, the second smallest will be the second one in the D tilde vector, etc. Uh, so let's uh, order our look FDR values and uh, also the average of. Uh, the k minus one smallest log of the R values is denoted by this. Uh, now, uh, the objective, uh, very similar to the expression that we had before, is still linear, of course, also in D tilde. Um, and uh, the FDR constraint is also linear in uh, D tilde. And the coefficients uh, that uh, are functions of the log of the R here. And the positive FDR constraint is also linear in D tilde. And uh, notice that um, there are uh, very similar uh, expressions for the FDR constraint and positive FDR constraint. The only difference is the coefficient of uh, uh, the first component of D tilde and, um, and the level and the constant here of the constraint. It, uh, for FDR, it reaches alpha for positive FDR to reach is zero because uh, the alpha enters here. Okay, so we can put all our uh, OMT problems in generic form. Uh, we have um, objective uh, that is linear in D tilde, 
and so it's the, the sum here of d tilde times uh, the coefficients ai, uh, subject to a constraint that is also linear in d tilde, and, uh, sum, and the sum here of, of d tilde times uh, uh, bi, uh, and the constraint has to satisfy that it's less than or equal to uh, uh, the constant here. So uh, the AIs and the BIs, which are a simple form, are and this is the AI and this is B1. These are the remaining Bs for uh, FDR and this is B1 and these are the remaining Bs uh, for PFDR and these are the constant CR, what I denote by the next slide by CR. Okay, so and, and of course uh, we have also the constraint that uh, the detail of vector is necessarily already uh, ordered um, so that uh, first uh, we reject first uh, uh, d1, uh, then d2, etc. Okay, so this is the optimization problem that we have. Uh, now, uh, uh, it's still an integer uh, problem, but we relax the integer requirement and end up with an infinite linear program to find the optimal d from rk to the unit cube, uh, which we prove has to be all integer almost everywhere. So the solution is necessarily integer. And uh, um, the, he, he, here's how we find uh, the solution. Uh, so for candidate uh, Lagrange multiplier mu uh, greater than zero, uh, we compute these RKs here. So it's uh, R1 is A1 minus mu B1, R2, A2 minus mu B2, etc. Uh, then uh, we uh, uh, decide uh, to the decision for the first coordinate is 1, only if uh, R1 is greater than 0, or R1 plus R2 is greater than 0, or R1 plus R2 plus R3 is greater than 0, etc. Um, only if the first uh, decision, uh, the, 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 the first entry is 1, we proceed uh, to, uh, to potentially also decide that the second uh, coordinate uh, will be 1. And then it will be one if um, R2 is greater than zero or R2 plus R3 are greater than zero, et cetera. So it's a very simple algorithm. It's uh, order um, K squared, or we can actually even make it efficiently, uh, compute it efficiently in order K. Uh, this is for a given candidate uh, Lagrange multiplier mu. And um, now what remains is to seek uh, the mu that will actually uh, satisfy uh, the, the constraint uh, here. And the mu that satisfies also this, this will be our optimal solution. Okay, uh, so, uh, so we have an algorithm, so we can compute OM, the optimal policy for FDR control, for positive FDR control, and for uh, marginal FDR con uh, control, which has been already introduced before uh, our work. And uh, what we want is uh, to compare these three procedures um, among themselves, but also uh, to the procedures that potentially use uh, the um, uh, uh, less optimal statistic, which is the marginal local FDR instead of the local FDR. Um, and in addition, what we want is to see what happens if uh, we have actually a misspecified model where we assume that our z-vector comes uh, from uh, uh, the two-group model where the coordinates are uh, independent, uh, but uh, although in fact it came from the general two-group model and there was some dependency between the coordinates. In addition, uh, we're going to um, uh, compare the performance to um, procedures that uh, have been used for large-scale uh, inference uh, um, already for a long time, uh, the celebrated uh, benjamin hochbel procedure, but also its adaptive version that actually uh, knows uh, the uh, probability of being null. So basically, instead of uh, uh, having for the i the largest p-value, the threshold i alpha over k, which is what you do with a bh, you have uh, a large uh, you, you have a higher threshold, uh, so it's easier to reject. It's I alpha over K times uh, uh, the probability of being known. And uh, another procedure is the, uh, what we call the SM uh, marginal FDR, SMFDR, 
uh, which first uh, orders the marginal log FDRs, and then it find it will reject the k smallest, where k is uh, the largest index, so that uh, the average of uh, the k smallest marginal log FDRs is still uh, at most a threshold uh, alpha. And this procedure, of course, uh, controls the marginal FDRs. All right. Uh, we're going to uh, um, demonstrate uh, uh, our insights uh, using uh, the following general uh, two-group model. Uh, so we have 5,000 uh, hypotheses. Uh, we generate uh, the, the hypothesis data vector from Bernoulli with probability of being non-null of 0 0.3. Um, given the hypothesis uh, state uh, vector, uh, the observed test statistics follow now a normal, uh, a multivariate normal distribution uh, with uh, mean minus uh, 1.5 uh, if uh, uh, age is equal to 1 or 0 otherwise. And, uh, and this is the covariance where the um, correlation among the observed uh, uh, um, test statistics is a block uh, uh, is, is block diagonal, so and with blocks uh, of size uh, five by five. Uh, so for each block of five, uh, the correlation uh, is uh, symmetric, where um, and, and within the block, uh, the symmetric correlation is either zero point one or zero point five. So, since we have 5,000 hypotheses total, uh, we have 1,000 blocks, and uh, within each block, uh, this is how the covariance matrix uh, looks like. Now, uh, in terms of uh, computing our, uh, our optimal policies, so, um, and also the competitors, so the marginal log FDR is uh, uh, straightforward. Uh, once you know the two-group model. Uh, however, uh, the um, log FDRs uh, require actually uh, going over all the possible hypothesis states, uh, if we consider it naively. So we have an order of 2 to the power of k uh, uh, calculations to make, which is completely infeasible, of course. Uh, for example, for the numerator uh, for in, in, in the log FDR expression, uh, this is uh, what uh, we, need, uh, we need to compute. And for k equals to 5,000, of course, it's unreasonable. However, uh, if we utilize the, the specific uh, uh, covariance structure that we have, and so in our setting, uh, we only need this many calculations. Um, because uh, the log FDR for each hypothesis actually depends only on five, uh, uh, five of the observed statistics, only those that are uh, that share its uh, block, and uh, and then the computation is uh, uh, far more manageable. Um, so uh, what we have is uh, just uh, 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 this number of computations, and it's feasible to do them uh, for thousands of hypotheses. Um, okay, so here are the results. Uh, I'm displaying the results uh, when uh, the correlation within the block was 0 0.1 uh, here, or uh, it was um, uh, either 0 0.1 or 0 0.5. So in 500 of the blocks, it was 0 0.1, and 500 of the blocks, it was 0 0.5. Uh, so, um, what we see first of all, which was striking, is uh, the huge advantage of incorporating dependency of actually moving away from the marginal log FDR and using uh, the log FDR. Um, so, for example, here, if we consider as error criterion the false discovery rate, then the optimal procedure, which uses the log FDR, of course, uh, detects uh, on average 263 um, uh, makes uh, two, uh, 263 true rejections, whereas uh, if, it, if it were to use instead a marginal log FDR, it would be only 169. And the same uh, type of advantage we see also if we have uh, the positive uh, false discovery rate uh, criterion instead or the marginal FDR criterion uh, instead. 
Uh, of course, uh, the advantage uh, increases uh, as the dependency increases. So uh, in this setting here, we have a stronger dependence than here, and therefore the advantage of moving away from the marginal log FDR into the log FDR is, um, is larger. Uh, so here the benefit is actually very minor for FDR, a little bit more for positive FDR, and a little bit more for marginal FDR. But, but, but here it's already very striking. Um, another thing to note is that if we uh, use uh, the misspecified uh, model, uh, then um, uh, so, so we assume actually we generated our Z vector from the multivariate uh, normal given the hypothesis states vector, but, uh, but when we now find uh, the optimal policy, we actually do it as if the Z vector came from the two group model. Uh, then uh, what we see is that we uh, can have an inflation if we control, uh, if we aim at controlling the FDR or uh, the positive FDR. So the inflation is small if uh, the dependency is uh, um, not very strong, but uh, if the dependency increases, uh, we get more inflation. It's still manageable, it's not very terrible, but, but there is an inflation above the 0.05 nominal level. Uh, where we don't see an inflation is here. If we look at uh, a marginal FDR and uh, the explanation is uh, fully theoretical, these two uh, procedures are actually um, the same. Uh, the threshold for, so, so the marginal FDR uh, uh, policy would be to, uh, to, to find a, a fixed uh, threshold that, that for which the uh, all the marginal log FDRs that are below that threshold will be rejected. And um, this fixed threshold depends only on the marginal distributions of uh, the observed test statistics, not on their dependencies. So necessarily, uh, this procedure uh, will uh, control the marginal FDR. So basically, uh, the, uh, the, this procedure is immune to dependence and, to, and, and, miss this, and the fact that ignoring it, whereas these two uh, are not. Um, okay, and another thing uh, to consider is, uh, well, we have three arithmetics, FDR, positive FDR, and marginal FDR. Uh, how, do they, how do they compare and contrast? So we expect actually uh, the policies with FDR and positive FDR control to be more powerful than for marginal uh, FDR control. In fact, uh, we expect the, the, the marginal FDR control will be least powerful than the positive FDR and then the FDR criterion. Um, what we see here is that if uh, the expected uh, number of true discoveries is fairly large, so we have uh, enough power then the differences between them is not uh, is not big. Uh, it's, it can be negligible. However, uh, if uh, the number the, the power is lower, as the power gets lower, uh, we can see uh, differences in power. And in this specific setting, uh, the difference is quite uh, quite large. So the expected number of true positives is 130 if we control optimally the marginal FDR, but it's 166 if we control optimally the positive FDR, and it's 169 if we control optimally the FDR. Um, now, we, we also, uh, we know what happens uh, uh, more or less in terms of how the policies differ. So the false discovery proportion is actually much more variable if we control the positive FDR and even more so if we control the FDR in comparison to the policy uh, with the uh, MFDR control. Uh, so basically uh, when the signal, and this is something that uh, has been known also from other words, if the signal is uh, rare or weak, uh, then uh, the procedures uh, that uh, control the positive FDR or the FDR um, tend to either reject, make a lot of rejections or very few rejections. And this is manifest here in the inflated marginal FDR for these procedures. Um, the, it's, it's an erratic behavior of the false discovery proportion, which is not very attractive. It's less so uh, for positive FDR control than it is for FDR control. So arguably, uh, for positive, uh, we would prefer uh, controlling optimally the positive FDR uh, rather than uh, the FDR because of this er erratic behavior when the power is low. Um, 
Um, okay, so just uh, to summarize the conclusions from the numerical comparisons, uh, um, which I think I've more or less said, but, but let, let's go over it. So the power advantage of the OMT procedures over their marginal counterparts can be very large and is increasing as the dependency increases. The policies that incorrectly assume the observed test statistic comes from the two-group model for FDR and positive FDR control can have levels above nominal, but for MFDR control, the nominal level is maintained. The inflation increases as the dependency increases. And the power gain of FDR and positive FDR policies over the respective MFDR policy is large when the overall power is low, and it is due to high variation in the false discovery proportion, which is manifest in the high MFDR levels of uh, the um, FDR and TFDR procedures. The variation in the FDP is greater with FDR control than with positive FDR control policies. Okay, uh, so finally, uh, let's uh, show uh, an application to gene expression studies. So we have uh, 15,270 genes and uh, what we have here is a meta-analysis p-value of four studies of ulcerative uh, colitis for upregulation and separately for downregulation of the genes. Uh, so here's a snapshot of um, the Excel sheet uh, that I downloaded from, from uh, uh, the, the web page. Uh, and uh, so, so, for example, uh, the second uh, uh, gene appears to be downregulated, and the, the third one has some evidence of uh, upregulation here. Um, okay, so assuming that uh, p values are generated from the two group model, we want to compare our novel policies, OMT FDR and OMT PFDR, with the competitors uh, that are, uh, have been used in practice. We need to estimate the mixture components of the two group model for this purpose, and uh, we do it uh, using the R package uh, mix FDR available from CRAN. The marginal loc FDRs and the optimal policy are computed assuming the observed test statistics are generated from the estimated two group model. So it's, it is a misspecified independence model because we don't know the dependency in gene expression between. Uh, uh, between the observed uh, test statistics. And uh, the uh, policies for FDR and, and positive FDR uh, control uh, coincide uh, for both uh, the analysis uh, for, uh, to find uh, uh, the genes that are upregulated and those that, uh, and the separate analysis to find the genes that are uh, downregulated, uh, which happens when uh, the probability for um, uh, for this policy, the probability of uh, at least one rejection is one, uh, then the two criteria uh, and policies are the same. Okay, so here are the results. Um, so, uh, we, we have, uh, the, the, for upregulation, uh, uh, our uh, novel procedure discovers 2,409 uh, uh, genes, whereas the competitors discover less, and for downregulation also, it discovers more and, than the competitors. Uh, what we had uh, in this uh, uh, study was also a validation, uh, a validation set. So uh, we could um, we could also see uh, because if we discover more, it doesn't mean that we discover the, the discoveries are. Uh, uh, true discoveries, it can be false discoveries. Uh, so uh, we looked also among the confirmed discoveries, which is, uh, it's an, again empirical, but it, uh, it, it was uh, computed using more, uh, uh, more data. Um, so, uh, so, so it's more trustworthy that uh, in, in the confirmed, uh, uh, this, the, the confirmed discoveries are true discoveries. And what we see here is that indeed we find also more uh, confirmed discoveries than the competitors, both for upregulation and for downregulation. So this is uh, promising that uh, the new procedure uh, can be useful in practice. Okay, so to summarize, uh, we have a complete mathematical treatment of the optimal procedures for positive FDR and FDR control in the general two-group model. We could uh, just as equally uh, consider other uh, 
uh, error measures, uh, which have been suggested uh, but less used in practice, such as the false discovery exceedance, which is a probability that the false discovery proportion uh, is uh, greater than a certain threshold, or uh, the family-wise error, or the expected number of false positives. They fit also into our framework. Now, for linear uh, objective uh, function, and it doesn't have to be only the expected number of true discoveries which we considered in this talk, we have an efficient algorithm for computing the optimal rejection reasons for both uh, independent test statistics or for the multivariate mixture model when the covariance structure has a block dependent structure. And we showed the large potential gain from incorporating dependence into the decision rule. And we have a paper with a lot more details. In terms of future work, uh, we expect the OMT policies to be useful in genomic applications where the dependence is known. Specifically for GWAS, the covariance is a known banded matrix, so it's not block diagonal, it's banded. Uh, we plan to provide efficient computational tools for the general two-group model with this type of local dependence, which we expect also is a dependence that can be handled. It won't be exponential in, K, in the number of hypotheses. And finally, uh, it's easy to extend the formulation to the, to, of our optimization problem to control more than one error rate. Um, so one uh, potential, uh, potentially useful uh, thing to consider is um, to control, say, not only the false discovery rate, uh, which, uh, uh, which is uh, directed at the, uh, the value that we, the investigator really wants, which is a small false discovery proportion. So the FDR is the expectation of that. Uh, but we saw that uh, for uh, a weak or rare signal, uh, it can have an unattractive policy of projecting very few or very many hypotheses. Uh, and, when cons uh, um, and in order to not allow this type of behavior, we perhaps want to control both uh, the FDR, say, at a nominal 5% level, uh, but also the expectation of uh, the number of false positives at a much uh, higher uh, threshold. Uh, thus potentially creating a powerful policy with meaningful control over the false discovery proportion in expectation without allowing the non-attractive policy which tends to reject many or very few hypotheses. Uh, so these are two directions that uh, we plan to uh, further consider. Um, uh, thank you very much. I'm uh, really, really sorry that uh, um, we're not in Lumine this year. And I really hope uh, that in two years' time, uh, the, there will be another talk and it will be in, in Lumini, in that beautiful place. All right, thank you very much. <laughs>